Hello friends, I am Sanchit Mehra and I am back again with another tutorial in C++ and I would be discussing here about vectors two methods. One is pushback and in place. More or less, we see that they are doing the same thing that they are inserting an element at the end of a container but yes, there is slightly difference between a pushback and an in place. So if we just study a definition, pushback is just adding a new element at the end of the container uh, just after its current element, whereas in place back, it of course add an element at the end of the container, but that element is constructed in place. Okay, and so the in place back takes the arguments to that uh, arguments to the constructor of that object to be constructed in place. Okay, so while you use pushback, you already have a new element there, but while you use in place back, you just pass the parameters of the constructor of the object and the object would be created in place. In that sense, you save uh, copy construction or in, in place if you have used move constructor, then you save the uh, moving operation. So this is my the difference. So I'll explain you with coding, with taking a, a demo object and show you how pushback and how in place back is actually doing the task. So let me first create a object let's say I call it foo let me have some variable let's say I score x I would have let me create a constructor here uh, that would take x and in the initializer list I would initialize it so yeah so just for instrumenting purpose or just I would add one of the C outs here just where my flow is going. So I'll write here foo constructor. Okay. Um, now let me create the copy constructor as well. Uh, const foo ampersand other. And let me also create this underscore x equals to other underscore x perfect and let me have the destructor as well and of course let me instrument the code here for the copy constructor and for the destructor so it's full copy constructor here and here it would be Foo test structor. All right. All right, friends. So I have a, a I've made a class, a user defined data type, in which it's holding some variable. It's having a constructor, then the copy constructor, and for the destructor for when this object would get destroyed. So this is the thing. So now let me uh, create a vector to hold the object of class foo. So std vector and it would be type foo let me create it as v1 here now uh, let me create an object here foo f1 let's say 5 here and let me use the pushback here uh, vector let's say pushback function And let's say v1 dot push back and here let me pass it as f1 okay so let me uh, let's see what happens when I'm creating an object here uh, foo object here and then I'm 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 uh, passing it in pushback method so let me um, run it so yeah so dear friends we can see here that uh, firstly here the constructor is called definitely the object is constructed here then um, when you are pushing back of course the new object is created so a temp for the temp object you are calling the copy constructor so this is where 
we see that a new object is being created here okay and the new object is being uh, is being passed to that uh, vector and then again the destructor for for the object that you have created here and the object that is that you have pushed okay so um perfect so this is the thing with the pushback method okay but not but we see here that the copy constructor is called here so but if you have a move constructor in that sense the move constructor will call so let me create a move constructor as well here move uh, so it would be foo ampersand ampersand other and this would be underscore x equal to std move uh, it would be other dot underscore x so here i'm using the move to just move the element here and let me just instrument it with example foo move constructor move constructor yeah here so this would be called in case uh, we are doing it like this uh, if we are just passing in r value here so since this is not a r value so to pass this here as an r value we could uh, comment this and we can just pass foo and we just pass here so let's see here what is called here now so yeah we see here the foo constructor that is uh, it would be called here because we are constructing an object then the foo move constructor is called because we are now moving it okay because i have a move constructor here and we are just passing in our value here so the move constructor will be called instead of the copy constructor perfect and then since there are two objects and now when the program is ended it's gone out of scope then both of the two objects has to be destroyed and so the destructor of the two objects has been called so this has been so far the story of pushback okay now let's see how the mplis back function does and what we pass in that okay so let me have the here std c out um vector and place back and here um let me do one thing we will use v1 dot on uh, and place back now and place back and uh, we would just be passing not we'll just not be passing a uh, object here we would just be passing the argument to the constructor of that class uh, of the of that object foo okay so here i would be just passing it as five here okay so understand this difference so five would be taken as an argument to the constructor of the foo and that it would be created in place inside the container and that would be emplaced uh, or that would be you can say inserted at the back uh, or at the end of the um, of the current element okay so let me now run this and let's see what all uh, operations is being performed here so this is pushback and let me run it again yeah so here my dear friends you see when you were calling pushback there are the two constructions happens here constructor called but when you are using an emplace back you see that there is uh, only this thing that happens or or better you would understand is when i would be uh, let me do it like this and here the scope of pushback would end here okay and so let me run it again yeah so here we can see in the pushback in the vector uh, when you're push uh, pushing back so it is it is uh, the foo constructor is called then the foo move constructor is called and then the destructor is called okay and so um let me also take the vector this here as well okay and uh, let me create let me scope it like v2 okay so 
let me do it like this fine so this would make us more clear yeah so what is being happening now yeah so 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 now it says that constructor move constructor destructor and destructor this is what we have discussed about pushback uh now when the scope ends the destruction happens and now we are we study about this scope so now in m place back foo is constructed only one time and then it is destructed when that vector containing that object goes out of the scope so my dear friends here we can see that in m place back we are only constructing the object one time and it is in place so it is saving an effort for you can say copy constructor or a move constructor and creating another instance of that the same object so here in m place back we have an ability to just pass the arguments to the constructor of the object and m place back will take care of creating that object in place and inserting it at the back of the container so this is my dear friends the difference between a pushback and m place back now the question comes when you should use pushback and when you should use m place back okay so my dear friends pushback is very simple okay but i would suggest that only use m place back if you get some kind of a performance in your application benchmarks okay because m place back could create a memory leak in case an exception occurs sometimes in such scenarios okay and the compiler could compile uh, you can say so let's say uh, i'll take an example so let's say it is it is a uh, std of vector and let's say it is foo here and if you now compile it so yeah so let's say it is it is uh, of integer right so and uh, so so this becomes a confusion here okay so let's say let's say if you are uh, if 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 you just here in in place where you just wanted to insert an element five and had a vector of uh, had this been of this definition now if you just compile it yeah so th this code compiled perfectly but here here uh, there is something which is not expected okay here the uh, it's it's allocating the vectors okay because it, it the the constructor of this would be called and uh, it would be allocating those much of objects here instead of just inserting five at the back of the container it would be uh, creating uh, that number of uh, you can say allocating more memory allocating more vectors of this type of this type okay so this is where we need to be very careful so to bring more clarity to bring to make a more bug free code uh unless or until your your you have you gain some kind of a performance improvement uh you should or advisedly use pushback okay until or unless you come up with something and you see yay yes see here uh it's a very very heavy to make a objects and we are gaining some kind of a performance improvement and hence so we could use an m place back here okay so um let's say if, if this you just meant to insert a 5000 or 5000 uh, integer into a vector but in this case this would compile it but here it would do something other okay so we had to be very very careful in that okay so my dear friends this is all i want to explain about um the pushback and the in place back methods that comes in the vector um and how you should be very careful in using both of these methods uh, I hope you like this video and do comment, do write comment how uh, you like that video and in what topics I should further make videos, tutorials on C++. Do let me know. Uh, do like and subscribe this video. That would help me. Uh, see you again in another video, uh, another lecture on C++ tutorials. Till then, goodbye. Keep learning. Bye-bye.